Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. On my last video, M5 paper with MQTT for Octoprint 3D print server and UI flow, I got this comment here. Great video, is there already support for touch in UI flow for the M5 paper? So in this video, we're going to look at the touch features of the M5 paper and how to utilize them in UI flow. Here we go. Be sure to watch this video to see how to use M5 Burner to prepare the M5 paper to work in UI Flow. Okay, we're in UI Flow now. You see here, I have the UI Designer open and I've added a label so that we can access the label functions in the UI here. But I'm going to go ahead and hide this so we can look at the code closely. So, like I say, we have the label functionality and we're setting the label position on the screen, setting the font, and setting the label color. Then we have our main loop. Let's look at the touch functionality. Accessing touch in M5 paper is contained in these two functions, get touch coordinate and get touch press status. So I've got this if else logic here and it's activated when you get touch press status. So if get touch press status, a label is going to show touch detected. And then I'm running a partial set screen show. So it's just going to refresh the small portion of the screen. And then I'm going to wait one second. Now, if there is no touch press status, it's going to print waiting on the screen. And it's going to refresh that portion of the screen every second basically. Now putting timers like this in the program, wait one second, wait one second, isn't always efficient. And we're going to talk more about that later in some of the other examples. We're going to run this one right now, but first I got to get connected to my M5 paper. Okay, so I'm going for COM11, picking the M5 paper down here. Let me hit OK. Okay, we're connected. So let's send that program to the paper. There we go, and you see it's waiting for touch. Now touch is detected. Touch detected, touch detected. That one second delay means you might miss a touch in that second. Touch detected, waiting. Touch detected, waiting. Okay. So it's relatively simple, but you see that touch detected is a thing that can trigger some other function within your program. So you don't really want to read touch coordinates until you detect a touch. Let's look at our next example now. This one is very much like the previous example. We've added just a slight amount of functionality here. So you see we have the label positioning, font, and color. We have the if, else, logic. We have the get touch press status, but we're going to set the label to get touch coordinate. Remember, that was our other function underneath touch was to get touch coordinate. So we're going to set the label zero to the value of whatever we get when we get touch coordinate, and that's only going to happen when there's a touch status. Otherwise, it's going to show waiting. And then again here, we're going to do just partial screen shows. And again, we have this one second delay under each of these. That's to slow it down so you can see it in the video. Let's go ahead and send this. Okay, so you see it's waiting. Now, you see it's got detecting the touch. And the coordinates are changing as I move my finger around on the screen. So you see there's an X value, a Y value. I don't know what the 22 is. It may be pressure. And I don't know what the true means either. This is as far as I've gotten. How do we break that out? Because we're really returning four different values separated by commas. We're going to explore that next. But first I want to talk about this use of a function. So like I say, we have these seconds in here. And these aren't necessarily efficient. I'm going to zoom out real quick here. Let's just kind of move this over here. Now I'm going to take one of these out. Let's take both of those out. I'm going to move this up into this function. So we're learning how to use a function. 
Now inside the loop, all we have is this call to this function. So I've named this function fn get touch. And when you create a new function and name it, it creates this block. Let's see where these functions are. Yeah, see, so because I created a function get touch, it creates this call to function get touch. Let's just throw that one away. So your loop doesn't have to be cluttered with a bunch of code. Your loop can have various calls to functions that are outside of the loop. In this case, it's going to do exactly the same thing as the previous example. Let's go ahead and send it. See? So again here, we're getting the coordinates, and we're really just looping. Function, get touch, wait one second, function, get touch. So you can improve the readability and functionality of your program by using functions. Okay, well, let's look at the final example, and I'm, and I'm going to show you how to break this get touch coordinate value out into x, y. Let's look at the next example now. This just builds on the previous program. See, I started out very easy. Just get the touch and tell us that it's touched. And that's, again, under the hardware touch functionality, get touch status. Let's talk about variables. Variables, all I've done is created several variables. Now, you have to be careful with the word touch because it may be a keyword in Python. Touch itself may be a keyword. So if you're going to use touch in your program, you might, might want to do something like I've done here, variable touch or touch x, y, touch x, touch y. If there is a touch press status, then we're going to set the variable touch to all the contents of that get touch coordinate. So it's going to have the x, comma, y, comma, amount of finger on the screen, and true. Now, here I'm using the inList function. Now, here is lists. I figured because I had this bracketed group of items with commas in between, it had to be a list, so I figured I'd learn how to use lists. So I'm setting touch x to the list variable touch get the first item. Then I'm setting touch y to the value in list getting the second item, which is y. So I'm breaking out the x and y values for you here in this program. Here, I'm going to conveniently combine them back into a string with an x in the middle so you can see x, y coordinates on the screen, set the label, refresh the screen with the screen partial show, and if there's no touch, then just show zero by zero, okay? And again, we have these wait one second blocks here, and again, we could move all of this functionality into this function get touch function and just refer to the function get touch block in the loop. So let's go ahead and send this and see how that works. Okay, you see there it's zero by zero. So now as I touch, and you can see those x, y values change as I move my finger around the screen. Touch is detected. You get an x and a y value. Touch is not detected. You get zero by zero. That's really everything available in UIFlow for the touch hardware in the paper screen. And we've demonstrated how to break out x, y value and how much finger is on the screen. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed learning about accessing the touch capabilities of the M5 paper in UIFlow. Thank you very much. So, make sure to check all the links in the description down below. Please subscribe, check out some of these other videos, and thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shitoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.